The shoulder complex and setting up the scapular position is very important to what we're going to do with the corrective exercise strategies of the shoulder complex and even rehabbing and correcting neck and thoracic positioning. The key, pos the key thing we want to think about with the scapula is we want to think about the scapula as sitting on the thoracic cage. That if, if you think of two dishes or bowls stacked together, the thorax sits here and the scapula sits flush on top of it. If we change its thoracic positioning, so if we curve the spine more or the rib cage more, then the scapula has to sort of follow that contour. If we extend too much through the thorax, like that, well then the scapula can't contour to that, and now the scapula is sort of just floating as the rib cage starts to straighten out. And that's why thoracic positioning is key to what happens to the shoulder girdle. And while we have a lot of clients that are kyphotic and collapse like that, we have also have just as many clients that are too extended, especially the younger people and especially the people that understand exercise, that understand they put the, put the chest up, shoulder blades down and back. A lot of these clients take, get rid of the entire curvature of the thoracic spine, so then the, now the scapula just sort of floats on the thoracic cage, and that's why it's so hard to create stability of the scapulothoracic articulation because of this change in positioning. So I want to talk real briefly about how do we create and what is proper stabilization or positioning of the scapula on the thorax. Again, the scapula should face just a little bit off midline, so if, if this is straight, it's about 30 degrees to the anterior plane, so off, all, right off the frontal plane of the body. The scapula must be or must have the ability to during function, posteriorly tilt, which is this motion right here. The inferior angle must come closer to the spine, and the superior angle should not really come away, but relatively speaking, come away relative to, to the inferior border. But again, the entire time is staying flush against the thoracic cage. Most of our clients have the problem, the superior aspect of the scapula is on the thoracic wall, and the inferior angle is away. We also call that winged scapula. But again, so the key is to create that posterior tilting and, as well, upward rotation. We have to get the scapula to upwardly rotate and control the eccentric downward rotation of the scapula. So again, posturally what we're looking at is a scapula must be able to, to be, relax just for a minute, here, positioned like that. Most of our clients are like this here, and they try to correct this position by hyperextending the thoracic spine and they even pull their shoulder blades down and back often from cues from us and what that does is actually turn towards this wall now please it pulls the scapula down into a depressed and downly rotated position so now the scapula is sitting here like this this is a bad starting position because as soon as Emily goes overhead it creates impingement because the scapula has so far to go to create and get out of the way so the, so the big key for us as far as scapular positioning is to change that thoracic position, make sure she stays long through the thorax, which starts from the head. She keeps the rib cage connected in the front, as we talked about, and she stays long through the thoracic spine back here. So ribs down in the front, long here, and she stays, keeps the thoracal pelvic canister connected and then we can change this, the scapular positioning here so that she, as she goes up overhead, the scapula can wrap around the thorax and then come back down nice and controlled without going down into a poor eccentric position where she goes, she'll go down into anterior or downward rotation and even some anterior pelvic tilt. And that's where we see that wing scapula start to happen. So again, posteriorly tilt. And we want to get, create upward rotation, not just pure squeeze down and back, which is just pretty much depression and adduction, the exact opposite of what we need to have happen as she brings her arm up overhead like that. So again, we want to, a lot of times we'll need to create length in the pectoralis minor to create the ability to get that posterior tilt. We may have to create some activation of the lower trapezius because we need that to pull the scapula into posterior tilt, and we also need some serratus anterior. But again, the push-up pluses, the Y's, T's, W's, they only work on the concentric function, not the stabilization function, and not the eccentric function, which is where most of our clients have problems, not with their concentric function. So again, get the scapula into the right position, but after, only after the thorax is in the right alignment. Again, long spine, soft thorax, no thoracolumbar hyperextension either, 
and now you can start to position the scapula in the right position and activate the muscles around the scapula girdle to create the stabilization you need for overhead and forward pushing pulling motions.